anniversary didn't come with the person that they love. Somewhere this year, we made plans, but plans did not happen how we thought they were going to happen. Oh, we started off this year with expectation, but we get to this day expecting a new year with greater hope and greater joy. Oh, Job in our text today reminds us that in just the blink of an eye, our tide can change. Amen. In just the blink of an eye, your life can be transformed into something that you never thought that it would be. Yes. Jesus' brother James puts a pen on life and he said, What is your life but a vapor that appears for a moment and then vanishes away? Somebody started off this year with high expectations, and somewhere along this year, the doctor told them that they had a disease that they never thought they would have. Somebody started this year thinking that they were going to have more than they had in years prior, but this year was the year that they ended up bankrupt. Somebody thought they were going to have the greatest year in the books of their life, but this was the worst year they had ever encountered. But I tell you today, you are most good company. Because while the year was not as great for you as it was for others, God is still good. Yeah. I want you to know that God is good not because of what you have in your checking account. Not because of how your body feels. Not because of how you, how you look at it. God is good because God is God. Yeah. God is God and God all by God. So, and whether you have the greatest year of your life or the worst year of your life, you still serve a God who deserves your praise. Today in our text, we encounter the man who was upright in the sight of the Lord. Yes. Job was a righteous man. Yes. He was a blameless man. There was none like Job in all the earth. Right. The text talks about Brother Job. It says that Brother Job not only had prosperity, that's his money, but he had posterity, that's his children. Yes. He had cash and to God that blessed Brother Job. Yes. And God had given Job all that Job had desired. Why does the Job walk right in the sight of the Lord? I hear the scripture say, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. You know, our year might have took some turns and changes. But I tell you, if you just walk upright, God can show up in the midst of your circumstances and still give you a praise. How can you praise God through the midst of your problem? You got to praise him anyhow. Not because of what you have, but because of who he is. Job today gives us a great example on New Year's Eve on New Year's Eve or how to go into the next year. Because Job experienced some days like we had never heard of before. He, his day started off through. The text opens up talking about how Job had all these great things for him. Job was a man of great character. Job was a man of great moral authority. Job children were going half deep at each other's houses. And Job thought, if they decide that they want to go off the wrong path, I'm going to make sacrifices for them because I love my children that much. He was looking out for not only his children, but he was looking out for future generations in his family. Job was a righteous and upright man. But the text is clear, the text is clear that Satan was walking amongst the earth. And God said to Satan, he said to him, where are you going? Satan says, I'm going to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. Well, check this out, check this out, check this out. God has so much faith in Job. The Satan didn't ask God about Job. God asked Satan about Job. Live your life so much that God can ask Satan about you. So that when God asks Satan about he has you, have you considered my servant Job? And Satan, knowing that God had already put a hedge around Job, Satan says, we all know you got a hedge around him, brother. Take your hedge from around him and watch how he curses to your face. But God knowing Job and God knowing Job's character, God knowing Job's integrity, God said you can do whatever you want to do to Job. Right. You just can't touch his life. That's right. That's right. God knew what he had in Job. He knew who Job was. He, he knew what Job would do when great trial and adversity was to come up against him. God knew Job. So God recommends Job, and Job began 
against this mm -hmm. test of this thing. Some of us this year had a great test of our faith. Mm -hmm. But all of this, Job understood where his help came from. Yeah. Through the midst of what you went through this year, you have to understand and have to understand where your help came from. Right. When the job decided that they didn't want you no more, know where your help comes from. Yeah. When your friends turn their back on you, know where your help comes from. Yeah. When your money is no longer in your checkout, you got to know where your help comes from. Psalm 121 says, my help comes from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. You got to know where your help comes from. That's the first point I want to break up in this text about Job today and what the difference that they made. Job understood where his protection was. Job understood where his protection was. Job knew who God was. He knew who he thought God was. And, and, and he decided that he was going to trust God even through what he was going through. Yeah. Don't you know that God protects us even when it seems like we're out there on our own? Yeah. That's a good point to be made about, you know, the devil was going to and fro seeking who he made the Bible. You know, that's what the devil does. That's what the devil does. He, he's like a roaring lion seeking who he, can, who he can destroy. But I want you to know something about God. And when you are a child of God, the devil can't do nothing except he goes to God. That's now. Right. now, he can come seeking to do what he wants to do, but except he get permission from God, the devil can't do nothing for me. Why? Because I'm God's child. You can't just walk up to me and try to destroy me. I'm God's child. I got some privileges of being in, in God's family. And, and Job knew I got to protect. My body might be wrecked with pain. My, 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 my house might be falling off. My kids might have died. My money might be gone. But I got a God who still says I am the trust. Job knew where his protection lies. And this year, this year, we were tested in our faith, but we had to be able to say, I know where my protection lies. I know who's going to provide for me in the midst of my trials and my situation. I know when the wicked, even my enemies, came to eat up my flesh, that they can stumble and fall. Why? Because I know who is my protector. Don't you know God will protect you from the yes, foolishness yes. that's around you? Yes, 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 yes. Job had to deal with three friends who were coming in to talk to him about God. Had to deal with the wife who told him to curse God to die. Yet Job still trusted in God. Yes, I tell you this year, some of us had those same kind of circumstances and situations, but you still have to trust God. That's that's right. Right. Don't you know he said he would let your enemies become your footstool? Yeah, yeah. Don't you know what he said when he said that no weather formed to get you is going to prosper? Yeah, yeah. But you got to really believe that and know that God is going to set up a standard against the enemy that's coming in like a flood. Yeah. You got to be encouraged enough that God will protect you. Yeah. Job's three friends came talking to Job. Talking to Job about who God was. They didn't come bringing him words of encouragement. They came bringing him words of discouragement. That happens sometimes when we enter those points of life. We're looking for some words of encouragement and everybody around us has something negative to say. That's why you got to drown yourself in God's word. And you got to be steadfast and unmovable in Jesus Christ because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Friends will change on you. Your friends came in talking about who God was. Notice what Job does. They come talking to him about who God is. Job talks to God about who God is. They talking to Job about God. Job goes straight to God and talks to God about God. That's right. In the midst of our hurt, harm, and hell, we got to stop talking to other folks and start talking to God. We want to go everywhere except to the source. God is the one who sets high and low. God is the one that holds the cattle upon the thousand hills. I, it, there's no need for me to go to a middle man. There's no need for me to talk to you about what's going on. Let me talk to the one who got all power in it. Yes. 
Job went straight to God about his concerns with God. Go to God and pray. Yeah. I want you to know that you have a line right in your heart, and you can just cry out to him, oh, and he will hear that. Oh, Job knew with his protection line. Right. Secondly, 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 Job knew what God's promise was. Yeah. Job, Job, Job knew that, that God had some promises to him. He knew that the God had made some covenants and he understood covenant. That's why Job was making sacrifices on behalf of his children. Because he understood that these sacrifices signified a covenant between him and God. Don't you know that God has a binding covenant with us as his children? Don't you know God is, 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 will be bound by what God has said he would do? You know, God's not a man that he should lie. Job realized that God made him some promises. Yeah. That's why Job says after, after they come and tell him all these things that had occurred, his children had died, his cattle had been stolen, uh, all these bad things that happened. What does Job say? Job takes off all that he had, yeah. sit in the moments of the men. And Job does not sit in turmoil. Job, uh, Job sits in praise. Job says, yeah. Naked was I born. Naked shall I return. But watch this, watch this, watch. He said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. How do you get to blessed be the name of the Lord when you have so many burdens in your life? Job gets to blessed because Job knew who, the, who his promises were in. This year, this year, this year. We had so much turmoil, so much hell, but we didn't realize that we had some promises in God. Right. How do you praise beside your predicament? How do you worship beyond your worry? How do you say hallelujah despite, despite your hell? You have to be able to say that in knowing what Job knows. When he says it in, in chapter 19, I know that my Redeemer lives. Yeah. And he shall stand at the last day. He knew who his promise was in. Right. And Job said, I'm going to worship God even if it means I got to do it by myself. Wife, you can be crazy by yourself. Friends, you can say what you want to say. Children might be dead. Cows might be gone. But God is still good. Anyhow. Job knew what his promise in God was. That's why what he was going through, Job said, even though he's slaying me, even though I don't feel him as close as I once felt, even though I don't have what I once had, even though my statue in this world had changed, even though my friends came to turn their backs on me, even though all that I have is gone, even though all of this is my current circumstance, I know how to say thank you anyhow. I know how to worship him anyhow. I know how to look to the hills anyhow. Why? Because cows don't go away. But the one who owns the cows don't always be there. He said, I know I got a promise in him. Sometimes we forget that God made us a prophet. He said He would make us the head and not the tail. He said He would make us a He would make us the ones that are in authority over things. Don't you know He said you can speak of things that are not as though they were? We got the prophets. And the devil can show up with his no good self and try to tell us all these bad things. But I got some promises in God. And I believe in God even if I got to believe by myself. You can talk about me. Tell me I'm foolish. Tell me I'm stupid. Tell me I'm dumb. But I'm going to trust God anyhow. Why? Because David said it better. I was young. But now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, I had seen begging for bread. I'm so glad that the God I serve made me a promise that he's a promise keeper. Yes, yes. Oh, realize. Yes. Realize that he had a promise in God. And if God makes you a promise, take it to the bank. Yes, if God makes a covenant with you, you can take it to the bank. Yes. Because God is going to stand by what he says. You go to the bank, most banks are FDIC insured. That means if the bank get robbed, you don't get robbed. 
to have insurance on the money. Right. That's yeah. right. That means that you are always guaranteed, not all of your money, you're always guaranteed up to $250,000 in that account. Each account, you get $250,000 worth of insurance. I want you to know that God's insurance is more than that. I want you to know that if you, if, if you put your money in the bank of God, if you put your life in the bank of God, if you put your hope in the bank of God, if you put your trust in the bank of God, God's insurance goes beyond $100,000. God's insurance goes beyond two hundred thousand. God's insurance goes beyond finances and taxes and faith, and He keeps you and He keeps all that you have because He has it all in His hand. That's the kind of God that we serve, Amen. and those are the kind of promises that He has made for us. Job knew the promises that God made. Not only did He know the promises, not only did He have protection, but lastly, He understood God made provision. Provisions literally means that God looks into the future and sees what you need down the road and provides it for you. God makes provisions. Job lost everything. Job literally went bankrupt. He didn't have anything but a wife who didn't believe him and friends who kept on coming with foolishness. But Job said, I know God's promise and I know God will make provisions for me. Yes. The text goes throughout the first book of Job all the way through to the final book of Job. Where Job encounters God and God gives Job back double for his trouble. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I want you to know that when you, when you struggle with the Savior, he can make everything go all right. When you put your hope in Christ, he knows how to lift you up in the midst of your fears. God made provision for Job. God made provision for us this year, too. Maybe it was just me, but I know God made provision. That's right. This year, sometimes I had too much month and not enough money. God made provision. Yes, Some days I didn't have enough strength, but I heard what Gerald, what Nehemiah said when he said, the joy of the Lord will be my strength. Yes. God made provision. Yes. Some days I was struggling with my own self trying to get out of bed because of depression, but God made provision. That's right. God makes provision for God's children. Yes. God doesn't leave you out here by yourself all alone. No, God steps into our circumstances and into our situations because God wants to care about us. God will make provision That's for us. Right. Is anybody here who's tried God this year? In your experience time, God showed up for you. When folks turned their backs on you. God made ways for you. When people talked about you. God did great and mighty things for you. And folks didn't know how you were going to make it. But God made provision. Like in the book of Daniel. The king decided that he was going to make a decree. And that decree was that. If you didn't bow down to this God that he had made, that you'll be cast into a fiery furnace. I want you to know sometimes we have those kind of people in our lives. If you don't do what they want you to do, if you don't conform to how they want you to conform, they will make a God and say, you have to bow down to this God. And if you don't do it, they're going to withhold what they have from you. Yeah. But Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah decided that the God that they served yeah. was more important than That's the right. king that sat on the throne. Yeah. The God that you serve yeah. more important than the job that you go to. Yeah. The God that you serve. Yeah. 
more important than the car that you drive. The God that you serve. More important than the house that you live in. This God that you serve. More important than the money in your savings account. This God that you serve. More important than the money in your investment account. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided that the God that they served was more important than Nebuchadnezzar and his evil. So when everybody else bowed down, and they all looked around, they saw these three Hebrew boys standing up by themselves. I want you to know sometimes in here you got to stand by yourself. Job had to stand by himself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to stand by themselves. And they stood there. And the king seized them. He said, grab Heat the furnace seven times hotter. Because I want you to know that these folks got to know that they got to listen to me because I'm their king. They heated the furnace seven times hotter. And the man who heated the furnace died trying to eat it. I want you to know that God will protect you from your enemies. Folks trying to burn bread on you, but I want you to know God can keep you in front of that kind of food. They take them down into the furnace. Throw them on into the furnace. And then they go back four days later. And they look down in the furnace. And they look around and said, I thought we put three in here. But somewhere in there is another one. And it looks like the Son of God. I want you to know that God makes provisions. While you're in your hell, God's right there with you. While you're in your heart, ain't God's right there with you. He'll make provisions for you. He'll show up for you. He'll be a friend to you. He'll be a bread when you're hungry. A bridge over troubled water. He'll be finances in the midst of your hell. God will be right there for you. But you got to keep on trusting him. Trust in him. Trust in him. He's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be right there, just don't you worry. Job said he may not come when you want, but he's right on time. We had some difficult days in 2017, but I want you to know that if God be with you, he's more than the world against you. God made a provision in eternity that extended down to time. He knew what would happen in the garden. Yes, he, did. he knew Noah was going to be a drunk. Yes, he, he knew Moses was going to be a murderer. Yes, he, he knew Isaac was going to be a liar. Yes. He knew David was going to be an adulterer. Amen. Jesus, God, knew. Yeah. So God decided in eternity yeah. that he was going to make provisions in time Amen. so that we could meet him in eternity. Yeah. And he wrapped himself up in humanity. Came down through time, 40 and two generations, yeah. born in a manger. Yeah. He grew up, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was dead, buried, crucified, but on the third appointed morning, rose again. Provisions. God made salvific provisions for us because he knew we would need. I don't know about you, but I know I have a need for a Savior. Job realized God made provisions for us. No matter what you went through this year, I want you to know 2018 is the best year of your life. Amen. If you keep saying it, and if your mind begins to believe it, and you believe it and you just trust in God, even if you go through the worst year of your life, it still can be the best one. Right. Why? Because you went through it with God. Amen. 
and God was your strength and your comfort. 2018 is upon us. Make your New Year's resolution to be, I'm going deeper with God. I'm growing in my faith. That when life happens, when days come and I just don't know what to do, I can just turn to God and be like Job and say, though you slay me, I'm still yes. I still believe in you. I'm still trusting you. If you don't know this Savior, the doors of the church are open. Yes. There might be someone here who might not know.